Hey everyone, Eric here. Today we're going beyond SketchUp Desktop to look at an extension that will allow us to import terrain areas at any size, as well as at a higher resolution than what we can get from the native geolocation tool. So just a disclaimer, I love the geolocation tool. I love how easy it is. I love how quick it is. I love that you could tile images. I also love that it uh, creates a latitude and longitude. Basically, it places it, uh, your terrain mesh and aerial that comes in, in a real world location. But sometimes I find myself needing a little bit more information. And I like the ability to know that I can get an area that is maybe outside of the limits of what geolocation lets you select. But more importantly, something with a little bit more detail. And I'm going to give you an example here behind me of exactly how that works and why that extra little bit of detail is important. So let's get to it. So I've got a terrain uh, geolocated already. This is a site in Malibu, California. It's a little cool peninsula. And let's just pretend I'm doing maybe an interpretive center or something in this uh, wildlife park. Now, again, nothing wrong with this image. To me, it's a little dark, but that's okay. Um, if you want to come down here to, this is what I'm kind of referring to when I say the resolution, I might need a little bit more. So I'm going to look, I'm going to sort of place myself maybe down here on the beach somewhere and switch over to my hidden line style, turn my hidden geometry on. You can see that these are the triangles or the polygons that make up this terrain mesh. Now, again, it's not bad, but if you pop over here to, if I'm going to pop over to what it looks like in real life, there's a little bit more of a transition, a sort of a sharper transition. You can see beach and then cliff, right? So when we have a lower resolution terrain, what we're going to do is you're going to see that those areas where sort of you go vertical get softened out. So that's an area specifically that I kind of want to focus on as part of my um, analysis or part of my project. So let me show you this extension that I mentioned in my intro that's going to, um, I think, make the process a little bit more accurate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off this geolocation terrain. So my location terrain, I'm just going to turn that off. I'm going to pop on a reference aerial that I brought in. Now, this aerial image was um, taken from another source. Uh, I do like it because the colors are a little brighter, but that's sort of beside the point. We're looking at terrain here, not necessarily the aerial image. It does have a scale on it, so this is to scale. Now, I brought this aerial in for a reason because I'm going to need something when I come to do my terrain mesh. I need something that I can scale it to. So this is all ready to scale. I'm going to use this as a reference. But first, I need to jump over to one more website. It's called Tangram Height Mapper. Now, you can get a height map from different places. A height map is essentially a area that shows up as white and black as down. This is used in rendering as well. It's called a bump map. Um, if I turn on my map lines and my map labels, it might make it a little bit easier to find. I know where my site is. Actually, it makes it easy because there's this little uh, peninsula kind of sticking out. So if I kind of zoom all the way in, as I zoom in, you'll notice that the resolution changes and I'm getting something that I can already tell is going to be a little bit of a peak and everything that's black is going to be flat. So in this case, if I don't need my map lines, I turn that off. I save this image or do a screenshot and then I'm ready to bring it into SketchUp. Now, in order to bring a height map into SketchUp or to turn more importantly, to turn a height map into a terrain, you need an extension to do this. That's why we're going beyond SketchUp desktop here. So I'm going to pop open here to extension warehouse. I just want to show you which one I'm talking about just first, just so you know, bitmap. If I type in bitmap, you're going to get this extension. I'll go ahead and put, make sure that the link to this is also in the um, comments below. Bitmap to mesh by TomTom. Tom. Great extension. Use it all the time. Love it. I don't know if you've heard about this one. So I'm going to close that because I've already got it installed. To use this extension, you need to just come over here to draw and what's called mesh from height map. So I'm going to select that option. It's going to ask me to choose the height map that I want. I have one saved already to my desktop. Now let me put a big note on this one. You can see the words or the label 250 pixels. That's because I saved this thing down. I scaled it down in pixels or resolution to 250 pixels wide. Now that sounds pretty small, but there's a reason for that because every pixel um, becomes a certain number of polygons or triangles within your model. So 250 to 500 is kind of your sweet spot. If you're working on a big area, you probably want to sample down. If you're working on a smaller area, you could probably sample up a little higher. So just be safe. Start with a smaller number until you know what you're doing, and then you can always go from there. 
let me show you. It's probably better that I stop talking. I'll show you what I'm talking about. If I click open, it's going to ask me, where do I want to start my height map? I'm going to grab a corner of my aerial. Now, I'm just using this aerial as a shortcut right now, because what I want to do is I don't want to go back and scale my terrain. I already know that my height map and my aerial are the same size. So I just go ahead and click that. What it's going to do, it's going to interpolate everything that's white is up, everything that's black is down. And there we go. That's my terrain. So that was actually pretty quick. Luckily, I did geolocate my model first. The reason for doing that is, first of all, now I know it has a real world location, so it has real world shadows. But more importantly, when I bring my height map in, I don't know exactly how tall it is. So it doesn't tell me the elevation. It just says what's up and what's down. So I'm actually going to use the geolocation terrain underneath as my reference. So you can see now as those two faces begin to split each other, I'm going to say that those two are at least within a foot tolerance of each other. And I'm going to say that that's, that that's good. Now, if I zoom in, I want to go back to my beach for just a second, the way that we looked at a minute ago. The reason why is because if I go back to my hidden line style, I'm going to turn on my hidden geometry. And I want to show you the difference here. So the little triangles, these are the new height map to mesh that I just made. These big triangles, that was geolocation. So if I turn my tags, if I turn the location terrain off, you can see there is my terrain. And if I turn it back on, there's the geolocation terrain. I don't know about you, but that is a big difference. Because if you go back to our reference in the real world, there is this relatively sharp transition as the slope goes up. We didn't have that before. So now going back to SketchUp, you can see now it's not super sharp, so maybe it's not as accurate as it is in real life. But remember, I scaled this down to 250 pixels. If I wanted more polygons, I could go up higher. I could double that to 500. But that's going to mean that my model is going to be a little bit heavier. And it's also going to take just a little bit longer to import. So you want to find the right balance for you. But to me, this is a big difference between what I had before and what I have now. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my hidden geometry off, turn my textures on, and I'm going to say that that looks great, that that is perfect. I can work with this. Now, one more step. This is optional. You don't have to do this. But the cool thing about geolocation is it brings the train and the aerial in at the same time. You don't have to do that step. Now, if you do this way, this maybe this height map may not be that helpful for you. So I'm going to pop up to another extension. It's actually by TomTom. Tom. It's not the point of this um, demo. I'm going to remove, uh, it's called Material Tools. I'm going to use that to remove the height map material. So I just want to wipe that height map out. I don't need it anymore. It was only used to create the geometry. In this case, what I'm going to do is move my aerial that I imported in. I'm going to move that up so that it's above my site, explode it. And this is where I get mixed up sometimes because sometimes I paint on the outside of components or groups, and sometimes I paint on the inside. I think when you're doing a projected terrain mesh, you want to paint on the inside, so you're actually painting on the raw geometry, not on the container. So it's going to take a second because it's quite a bit of information. That's OK. There it is. Click out of there. I don't need this. This was just That was just my reference, and that was also used for my texture. So two things here. I'm getting a brighter color. I'm getting something that just looks um, just neater, you know, as far as my, my, so I can go now start my modeling process. And most importantly is I'm getting this, this big, uh, this sharper transition. And I'm going to just wrap up by popping down here, pulling a section plane. Before I go, I'm just going to pop a section plane because I kind of want to see what that looks like. I just kind of want to see, um, that sort of transition a little bit. So if I was doing a slope analysis or something like that, you know, this would just give me a little bit more accurate information to work with. And I'm going to go ahead and turn toggle that off because I really didn't need that. I just kind of wanted to see what it looked like because, you know, it's kind of cool. So that was it. I know I went pretty fast, but if you follow those steps, if you go to the height map website, if you go in and grab a screenshot of the height map, if you scale it down using something like Photoshop or an image editor, scale it down. Make sure you're starting with something like 250 pixels, maybe 500 at the max. Bring that in using bitmap to mesh. And then if you don't have that reference image like I did to scale it, that's OK. You can just scale it yourself after the fact. 
but play around with this. I promise you, you're going to like it. You're going to find a use for it. And remember, I just did this small little point. If I wanted to do something like the entire state of California, I could grab a height map for the entire Sierra Nevadas. I could do that. Um, so what I really like about this is that there's not really a limit in size and definitely gives you a choice to control the amount of detail and the amount of information. So I'm going to stop there. I'm going to let you go. I want you to please uh, make sure to share, uh, like, subscribe if you haven't already, and comment below. If this is something you've seen before, let me know. If this isn't new, that's great. I'll take that into account when I make the next video. Uh, if you haven't seen this before and your mind is blown like some of the other people I've shown this to, let me know that too. That feedback helps me when I make these videos for you. Either way, comment, let us know what you think. And of course, have a good day. We will see you next time.